Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We got we got the pooches here, and now Knox, as soon as he hears me start talking, he has to come over and say hi. You want to say hi, bud? Come on. Come on. That's a good boy. You smell slightly less like butt foot today. Yeah. You want to say hi to everybody? Speak. <laughs> good boy. That's a good boy. All right, go on. All right, what is going on, everybody? Uh, wonderful musical video. I, I worked hard on that. I need to do it with my new logo. I just, I, I, guys, I've been so incredibly busy. I am, oh, I'm running on fumes. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, someone said something about a new balloon. I was not tracking that. Um, I, sorry, there was a dog hair that was floating in front of my camera lens. Uh, but there's another one. Dude, you shed like crazy. As he stands in front of the camera. Uh, good evening. What is going on, everybody? Raptor052, thank you so much for the donut. Says another 850 has been promoted to debris field. I, I heard about that. I haven't, I haven't read everything up on it yet. Um, from what I hear from the rumors, it was actually uh, blue on blue, like Russian anti air shot it down, but I, I don't know any details yet. Uh, let's talk about bringing democracy to the moon. I, I have played Helldivers, everyone. Uh, I, somebody I, I stream with and I play with sometimes, uh, Tiger Teal. Um, he, I was, look, I got, I've been on Enshrouded and I love Enshrouded, but out of nowhere, I get an email and it says, Tiger Teal has purchased a copy of Helldivers 2 for you. And I get a text, not four seconds later, you better fucking play, bitch. Like, that's all I got. And I was like, all right, all right, I guess this is happening. So I played Helldivers. It's enjoyable. It really is. Uh, I'm still on, um, what is it? Uh, Enshrouded. I love Enshrouded, man. I'm having so much fun. Been looking forward to this for days, rough week. Good to see you. Ego Nowhere. Hey, man, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Evening, buddy. Bot working yet? Well, I'm working on it. I have the power animal time shorts. Yes. I dislike your power. Power abuse? Oh, of course not. I would never... <laughs> I, Helldivers has taken the world by storm. But here's the thing, man. Helldivers literally took a simple idea and just brought it to gamers. It, like This is the thing. What do you like as a gamer? Like, don't get me wrong. Single player games have their place. They do have their place and I enjoy them. But the games that go for longer periods of time nowadays are the ones that are multiplayer, either PvP or PvE. Helldivers went, okay, let's make PvE but let's make it on a fucking global scale where everybody is on one team and the enemy is the environment and they're on the other team and everyone has to work together. And holy shit, it is revolutionized gaming at this point in time. And I'm really excited for it. Moon, I know, we made it back to the moon. Super happy about that. Uh, if you have to compare the kid to any pro wrestler who, hmm. <laughs> I shouldn't... My brain immediately went Kurt Angle, and I shouldn't have gone there. I'm sorry, man. I can't control what's up here, guys. Uh, the reason that's not funny is Kurt Angle was a wrestler in the early 2000s, and he um, uh, he unalived his family and then himself. Uh, yeah, it was... It was, you think Undertaker? I met the Undertaker. He is very nice. And I got roasted by one of his, I don't know if it was a friend of his or one of his cronies or whatever, but like I walk over to him. Guy's huge. Like he towers over me. I mean, I was like shoulder height. Very nice guy. I was like, hey man, I'm a huge fan. You know, I watched you ever since I was a kid. Uh, I didn't want to be like, man, I loved it when you and you know, uh, uh, mankind. And I, I, no, not my place. So I was just like, hey, can I get a picture with you? And I go to take this picture and I hand my phone off to one of his buddies and um i'm standing there next to the fucking undertaker and i'm like boom and he's got a fist up like it's it's good shit like he's he knows the drill my phone starts ringing i look at my watch and, and you know because i have a smart watch and i was like i'll just ignore that i don't know that number and the guy the guy holding my phone taking the picture goes what's grinder and i was like i just started laughing everyone started laughing i was like god damn it i just got roasted in front of the undertaker you know what fuck it i'll take it so did I get a chance to check out Bowmark Missile System or used in Maine? I'm sure other places. I have not. Um, I did look into Meads, uh, the Medium Extended Air Defense System. And I have a long form video coming for that. Uh, the Canadian Farmer, thank you so much for being here, man. Oh, we've got Canadians in here. Do we got Brits in here? The band's getting back together, guys. Um, sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up with these guys. They're, they're coming in pretty quick. Um I wish Halo ODST would have been bigger than it was. So I, I didn't know this. I read this recently. Apparently, the devs of Halo ODST had a plan for ODST 2 that was going to be like Helldivers, where it was everybody on the servers playing for a common goal. 
and EA or fucking Bungie, whoever had it at the time, no, EA doesn't have it now. It's 343 has it now, was Bungie, said no, uh, which I didn't know. Uh, so that kind of really irritates me. Pert Angle, as the kid, fair enough. <laughs> No, that was Chris Benoit. Oh my God, Kurt Angle is. Uh, yeah, that was Chris Benoit. Oh my God, I can't believe I fucked that up. Yeah, I was. I was thinking of Chris Benoit, the Crippler Crossface, but I said Kurt Angle. Oh my God, you're right. That was Chris Benoit. I'm so sorry, guys. Yes, Chris Benoit was the one who unalived his family and then himself. Uh, yeah, sorry. Ah, yeah, that was Chris Benoit. I'm so sorry. I just got to those. Uh, WWE isn't your thing. It's all right. We need to send flat earthers to the moon. I, this is the thing, man. Okay, so here, here's the best. I, I found something on the internet that, that explains the best way to deal with flat, earth, flat earthers. Okay. So you're saying that the earth is flat and NASA's covering it up. That's the logic. Okay. There are 13 countries that have a space program. Many of these countries don't like each other. Like Russia, the United States, China, the United States. Pretty much everybody in the United States. It fucking sucks to come in second. All right, I'm sorry. Except for education. That's fair. I'll tell you about it. I got I got roasted by a Swedish student very recently. Um, I deserved it. But uh, through those 13 agencies, uh, like three of them have, or uh, four of them have been to the moon. And they have combined around 71,000 employees. Um so logically what you're stating if you think the earth is flat is countries that don't like each other that have a combined 71,000 employees are all on the same page covering this up the end that's it uh so the, the great china yeah oh man you know i had someone uh comment after i made that that video with china and they um they're like oh i'm gonna just try and ignore your your incredibly racist china voice and i was like so you're telling me I should only do white countries? It's racist, bro. Because, like, I never want, like, originally I was like, I'm not going to do Asian. I'm not going to do African. Like, I, uh, you know, because I like I have that American mentality. And we're, like, uber afraid of racism. Um, and then somebody commented. They're like, hey, man, why don't you do these other countries? Uh, you know, you singling out the ones that you don't want to do accents for is kind of racist. And I was like, you know, you're fucking right. Everybody get in the smoke. I just didn't do Vietnam because I haven't mastered the accent. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. It's a global conspiracy. If you play Halo 3 ODST, there's a game mode that allows four players to go up against multiple waves of enemy Covenant troops. Ooh, that sounds like uh, Titanfall with uh, Frontier Defense. I love Frontier Defense. Good evening from Arizona. I do like Arizona. We bought my wife's car in Arizona. North Korea landed on the sun at night. Oh, God. The North Koreans, man. I, there's been a lot, like a staggering amount of North Korean propaganda on, uh, on TikTok nowadays. It's really weird. Like, I guess... North Korea got TikTok. Okay. Kella. Oh my God, man. You guys got the most difficult names. Hold on. I mean, I'm going to hooked on phonics this shit. Kella Tony. Second. Good enough. If I count it correctly, this week's tally is seven Sukhois, one A50 mainstay. This warms my soul. Drinks on me. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, so. One of the good things, uh, there's the Swedish, Swedish student we had very recently, um, very highly educated. Honestly, I've worked with a lot of uh, partner nations, and I will tell you this was hands down the most intelligent air defense tactician I have ever met. Like, he is leaps and bounds uh, in front of other, uh, you know, partners and allies that I've worked with. Crazy smart. And... Um, we kind of just had like a during graduation before everything started. We were like, hey, does anyone have anything you want to put out to the group? And he's like, I would. And all right, yeah, cool. And he came up and he's like, I want you to know, um, I absolutely realize that this is a school that I would want my subordinates and my peers to go through. I learned an incredible amount here. Um, I also think that it built, built great camaraderie with my American counterparts because we all bleed red. So no matter what happens in this world, I want you guys to know like we Swedes have your back and we, we assume that you have ours. And we're like, I was like, fuck yeah, man. Like, I was all about that. But the Swedish student, he was fast. When we did our, our APFT or ACFT, Army Combat Fitness Test, dude was running like a champ. And I think he was the fastest run, no, second, second fastest runner out there. Because you always got that one gazelle guy. And uh, he gets to the end, and he wasn't even out of breath. And they're like, man, you know, he, he's quick. And I was like, bro, he he's coming down from the Alps. And he's like looks at me kind of confused and he's like 
that's Switzerland. I'm from Sweden. And I was like, mm, yeah, I deserve that. I deserve that. And he's like, typical American education. I was like, mm, I fucking deserve that too. All right, shit. All right, fuck it. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it was, I totally deserve that. Uh, there was another, oh, there's a couple of super chats I missed. I'm so sorry, guys. Real men have little dogs. I couldn't agree more. I, I miss Hobbs. Was it Wright Patterson last week in the Air Force Museum wearing my I'd intercept me F-22 shirt? Air Force guard gave me the chuckle tap and said, HLC is life. Bro, I love that. I love So we got done with the graduation today. And I was the MC, obviously, because I have a, a good amount of public speaking experience. And uh, I was the master of ceremony. So I went through the whole thing. I've done this like a thousand times. I pretty much memorized the entire script. And um, we get done. And I was kind of starting to clean up and stuff. And this guy comes up the stairs and he's like, hey, are, are you the guy that makes those those TikTok videos? I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, and I kind of tapped him on the shoulder. They're good to meet you, man. Because I always want to match their energy. When someone meets me, I want to match your energy. That's the person that I am. Because I, if you're excited, I want to be excited with you. Um, and uh, I made an announcement right after that. They're like, hey, you know, people are leaving. You let them know that they can come on stage and take pictures. Because we have like a nice like rank set up. We got NCO. We got a bunch of flags and shit. It, it, it looks really nice. And uh, I was like, ladies and gentlemen, be advised, uh, you know, you are encouraged to bring your graduate up on the stage and take pictures with them. And I hear somebody all the way in the back. What about pictures with the TikTok guy? And I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing. I was like, no, <laughs> I rolled off the stage. Um, the missile hasn't timed yet. Hold on. I, I'm trying to keep up with everything. There's some that I missed. It appears Ukrainians have shot down another A-50 mainstay. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't read the the articles and information yet like I, I i'm not gonna lie guys when you when when they shot down the first one i was like cool i want to break this down there's not enough information for me to make an educated guess just based off of what i know there's just not enough information i don't know where the a50 was shot down yes it was over the the the, the sea of azov but i was looking at the front line in comparison to the sea of azov and that outranges patriot um so i i just i didn't know where things were i mean that you could say that over the sea of azov and it's over the land i don't know uh but there wasn't enough information for me to make an educated guess is nightbot still broken i'm sorry hold on i just want to make sure i stay with all this stuff all right since you're an air defense specialist i uh, i'm an air defense idiot but i'll try uh i'm curious of your opinion on the a10 uh standoff man pads fanboys are dissing it at every turn um so, how do I word this? The A-10 is a phenomenal aircraft, and it has a lot of survivability. Similar to, um, I think it's the Frogfoot, the MiG. Uh, there's a MiG, but it can take a punishment. I mean, and the Russian, uh, uh, what is it? Um, Hind can take a shit ton of punishment. The A-10 can take a shit ton of punishment. I mean, they are just robust aircraft. The thing that benefits the A-10 is almost always they fly, nap of the earth I think is what it's called, but low is shit. They fly very, very low. Now, when you're, you're trying to hit a target, low is both good and bad. Low means you have less range to get to your target, but it also means you have a shorter window of hitting your target because they use what's called mask, masked terrain. I just say masked terrain, but like you won't understand the phrase, so I have to enunciate a little bit. Um, and what that is, is think of it like a flashlight. A radar is like a flashlight. Now I got it, stingers are just, you know, hand fired, but it's the same thing because it's also line of sight. So if I point my radar in a direction and there's buildings and there's there's trees and there's there's a mountain out there, if you were to do the same thing with a really powerful flashlight, well, those objects are going to cast a shadow and you can't see directly behind them. That's the benefit of going low and, and slow or low and fast towards an enemy target. It allows you to pop up last possible second, release a payload and peel off. Uh, radar notch and peel off pop flares now flares chaff jesus himself is not going to save you from a patriot system um mass terrain will but uh stinger on the other hand is pretty good about chasing their target and not getting fooled by flares more modern flares like people think that flares are just flares but more modern flares are actually designed to replicate the temperature of the engine of the actual aircraft to confuse those missiles I don't know. I learned that recently. I wanted to share that with you. Uh, question for you. A hundred thousand. Is that a million dollars or a hundred thousand? God, dyslexia's kicked in. Or a million apples. Mm. I'm going to say the dollars because the apples, I could sell them for a markup. Yes, but 
could I sell that many in that amount of time? I couldn't do it. What happened to sound effects for chat? So Stuart, I took those out. And the reason I took those out, at least for the under $50 ones, and, then, and that's not to try and like cheat anybody out of it or anything. Um, the reason why I took those out is they were going off all the time and they were interrupting like what I was trying to tell people. And I got more than a few comments stating, um, hey, you should take those out so you can finish your thoughts before they go off. And I just kind of scroll through and I, I check things as best I possibly can. We just sanctioned Russia to the shadow realm today, the murder of Navalny, and giving Ukraine 300 billion in Russian assets. Russia's in trouble. <laughs> I just... I can't... I try and look at things from a non-emotional perspective, right? A, a non-emotional perspective, and I'm like, all right, logically, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. Yes, that is a fact, right? That was They were part of the Soviet Union. Cool. When the Soviet Union collapsed, they became their own entity. Cool. Your country collapses. Other smaller countries are going to take that land. That makes sense. Ukraine had nuclear weapons at that point in time. The U.S. said, Ukraine, denuclearize, and we will protect you. And Ukraine said, that's fair. And they denuclearized and said, hey, America, protect us. And then Russia, knowing that they didn't have any unconventional weapons, 10, 15 years later, annexed Crimea and started rolling across the border. So, like, I... I've even tried painting this in a way like, is are they really the good guys? Are they really the bad guys? I tried thinking about it from every angle I could, and I genuinely can't like think of a way that Russia's on the right side of this. And you know, again, personal opinion, not the opinion of any government entity or any the opinion uh, of any anything. Fifty dollars from Ford. Love your videos. You and Fundium. Do you uh, think Russia will ever concede defeat? I don't see them completely defeating Ukraine. So that's actually a great question. I'll get to that. I'm going to keep on working my uh, my way down. Okay, I will get to that because that is a wonderful question. And I actually, um, I do want to answer that. I have a great answer for you. My local law enforcement learned what happened when you leave an unsupervised 12 Bravo. Look, unsupervised 12 Bravo is always a bad idea. For those of you who don't know, that's a combat engineer. I love combat engineers. I do. I enjoy combat engineers. But this is a big but. All of them that have seen combat have a twitch. And, and you'll only know it if you see it. They kind of bounce through life. And that's because they've been just a little too close to one too many blasting caps. That's that's all it is. They just, they have a twitch about them. Okay, they're like Scrat from Ice Age. That's really how they just move through the existence. Um, along with the Jungle, Jelly, Willy Pete, and Angry Plato, Fire Department heads <laughs> were cut out tonight. <laughs> Clear out Groundhogs. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, look, man, don't get arrested, Ohio trucker. All right, don't get arrested. Uh, is the dog on the right a GSP? Uh, no, she is a um, um, rat terrier. Yeah, she's a rat terrier lab mix. And then Knox is an Australian Shepherd and uh, Pitbull mix. More bone? I do got to get more bone in. Greetings from Musk. Holy shit, Muscat. Muscat. Yep, former home for feeble-minded. Now home for 63s, 63s, 59, and one fine-looking 27 playing Civilization, listening to HLC. That's what I'm talking about, El Tejon. Play that Civilization. I never got into the Civilization games. I'm, a, I'm an Age of Empires guy. That's my thing. Zaku, thank you so much for the donation. Much appreciated, my guy. Uh, Mark Deckard, video shows Russian A50 flaring like crazy before shootdown, so if they saw an inbound... So it depends. Yes, they're not getting painted by a beam. They're not. But if they have a powerful enough radar on board, like the A-50 does, they can detect something moving towards them quickly. So could be Patriot, could be an S-400, could be an S-300. I mean, that's a very slow, easy to hit target. Um, so if they're popping flares and the flares didn't work, that tells me that it's a radar guided system. That's all I could really know. I would have to see the engagement to even get around a, a reasonable uh, decision on that. All right, I'm working my way through, guys. You think Ukraine has a roaming Patriot system shooting down Russian jets? Yes, they've actually used it offensively. Um, this is something we did in 2003 uh, in the invasion of Iraq. What they would do is they would bound forward infantry, armor, cavalry. They would do their things. And then to cover them from the Iraqi air um, 
Air Force, they would have Patriot follow them. And then they would bound forward and then Patriot would move up. They would bound forward, Patriot would move up. This also helped kind of result in our fratricide incidents because they were decentralized and didn't have communication with the, the assets in the air. Um, lesson learned there. But yeah, you can use it offensively. It doesn't take very long. If you're quick with that system and you don't do it by the book and you just bend a few rules, you can get her up and running pretty damn quick. All right, RC Ford, I finally got to yours. Love your videos and fun to BB. Do you think Russia will ever concede defeat? I don't see them completely defeating Ukraine. I don't either. And here's the thing. So so keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want you to understand something. I got this actually from Alex Hollings and it makes so much sense. If you guys aren't, aren't subscribed to Alex Hollings, I encourage you to. He's crazy smart. He's a Marine veteran. He does air power. He's a writer for Sandbox News. Really good guy. Um... So he brought up, he's like, the, the goal is not to defeat Russia. And I was like, well, I, well, why would that not be the goal? You know, because we could just steamroll them at this point. And he said, no, it's not, that's not the purpose. The reason we're kind of putting a little bit in here and there is if you defeat Russia, you have potentially created nuclear capable warlords like let's say you overthrow russia and now you have people in all areas of russia seizing control and now they are nuclear capable which there are there are many things in this world that are more scary than vladimir putin that's one of them in my book uh so i was like so what's the goal then he said it's to cause enough damage that they decide the campaign is no longer worth it for them and they go back that that way vladimir putin saves face that way the Russian government saves face and everybody isn't in a nuclear winter. And I was like, that actually makes a shit ton of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so, yeah. Hey, my friend, what do you think? Or, hold on. What do you think? I'm about the F-35 being able to fire nuclear missiles. I believe the B-61 missiles. I have not heard that, but I would not be surprised. Um, with the, I think it's called the, the gun method of nuclear weapon. Uh, it's pretty much you take a tube and a plate that are made out of uranium and you take another like chunk that's made out of uranium and you, you fire it or plutonium you fire it and that's that's what creates the, the the meltdown more or less that's kind of a simplified idea the other one's implosion drive and um hang on all right uh sorry i have somebody who's been reaching out to me about some information um but i think it's great that the f-35 and the f-35 is a very good multi-role fighter and i hate admitting this i really do the f-22 it's my baby i love the kid one f-22 versus one f-35 that f-22 is going to win all day every fucking day a squadron of F-22s against a squadron of F-35s, I would say probably 70-30 or 60-40, the F-35s are going to win. They just have a better network structure, better sensor integration, uh, fucking tailored guidance. It's just, and I hate admitting that because I just, the 35 is not as sexy to me as the F-22. It just isn't. Uh, Quinn Clayton says, good evening, Sergeant. Oh, man, I'm off duty, homie, but. There were fears that the ATT outage was a cyber attack until they announced otherwise. What do you think the real one would look like? And do you, uh, how do you recognize one? I, I was seeing on the news today that it was a cyber attack, but I don't know how accurate that information was. Um, hmm. I don't know. Like, honestly, I've never really thought about how to recognize a cyber attack uh, because, I mean electronics are just woefully unreliable so i don't know that's that's a million dollar question i'm so sorry quinn usually i try and be like really on top of these things but i um bro i quinn i have no idea i'm gonna let me try and get you an answer on that on how to recognize a cyber attack let me reach out to some of my it folks see what kind of information i can gather for you and I'll at least put it together in a video for you i can i can do that for you quinn make sure you write that in my notes um, all right, sorry, I write kind of slow. Ever been to Fort Stewart? No, I've never been to Fort Stewart. Uh, actually, the whole East Coast in general, I've never been to Stewart. I've never been to Benning. I've never been to... Um, it's called Liberty now. It was Fort Bragg. Uh, I have been to Fort Knox. That's about as far east as I've ever been, except for, like, obviously going overseas. 
All right, heard a guy named Vermin Supreme. Oh my God, have you guys not heard of Vermin Supreme? I love Vermin Supreme. Um, <laughs> I, I heard about him years ago. For those of you who don't know who Vermin Supreme is, I think he's in like Vermont or Oregon or something. I don't know where he's from, but he's like an old dude with a beard and he has a rubber boot on his head and he wears the rubber boot at all times. And his policies are just... 10 years ago, his policies were like, that's that's ridiculous. And now they're kind of making sense. Like, mm -hmm, maybe this guy's onto something here. Maybe we just need to simplify all this shit. Because he's like, uh, every house will have a pony under my administration. Uh, they will all be gifted a free pony from the United States government. I was just like, this dude ain't bad. Like, So if you've never heard of Vermin Supreme, please look up Vermin Supreme. I think he runs like every year or every election. I agree with survivability at the Monino Air Museum in Moscow, the IL-2M Sturmovic actually had steel armor bolted to the wings and fuselage. Is that is that the one that I'm thinking of? The Frogfoot? As revolt. The Frogfoot is obviously not the Sturm Sturmovic. Russian I don't know why their aircraft are so survivable and just their tanks are not. I mean, they like autoloaders. The US has never liked autoloaders. Uh so I don't know. I did just see the first video showing uh abrams in ukraine so pretty happy to see them out there putting it work i hope they do the job i hope they keep people alive uh hold on I, I gotta go back up it like jumped me way down opinion on helldivers 2 oh i did already talk about that a uh, great game great concept should have happened a long long time ago should have happened a ton of years ago because it's it's literally just taking the idea of co-op and making it an entire server of co-op like, I feel like that's not that hard of an idea. And I feel like that it's it's strange that we didn't get it until 2024. So maybe it was really hard to make, but I love the idea. I love it. My bomb is bomb, kaboom is kaboom. No bad Putin. Weapons guy here. I know something. Something, something. <laughs> He's not in trouble. We have five. 11. Five Marine, 11 Bravo, three Army, 68 Whiskey follows. The P for plenty and E for enough rule. <laughs> Get the first round of barbecue, made it a huge fireball in that farmer's field. Hell yeah. So I think Marines in chat may have to correct me if I'm wrong. So 11 Bravo in the army is infantry. Now infantry in the Marines, I believe is 0311. I could be wrong on that, but I usually have a pretty eidetic memory for numbers. Uh, and then 68 Whiskey is combat medic. And then P is for Willie P. It's, it's a nickname for what we have called um, White Phosphorus. So White Phosphorus is fun, but it just burns a long time. And keeps burning. It'll burn underwater. I don't know if you know that. Uh, the, the best way to deal with white phosphorus is literally pack it with mud until you can get to a medical station and they can cut it out of you. Because uh, it'll keep burning as long as it can find oxygen. Including oxygen and water. And it burns like 5,000 degrees. Really good at like dealing with threats. We'll go with that. Make the kids sing Rocky Mountain High. I don't know all the words. I literally just know Rocky Mountain High. Like, the, the, I just know that part. I don't know the words. I'll try and get the kid to sing some songs. Let me put that in my notes. All right. Save the nukes, drop some dukes. 35 looks ugly as shit. It, I mean, it, it is Fat Amy. It's, yeah. Much love you and your voices from Mississippi. Thank you so much, Angie B. I really appreciate it. Retired 88 Mike here. Ooh, IED finder. How's the spine, buddy? I'm sorry. That's fucked up. I shouldn't have made that joke. Former 54 Bravo 74 Delta. Oh, shit. Chemical. Jim, you've seen some shit. I've had long conversations with chemical people. Y'all have seen some shit. The shit that they show y'all in like AIT and ALC and shit. Y'all seen some shit. I want you guys to know. I would rather... I would rather get attacked with a bayonet which is arguably one of the scariest things in the world. I would rather get impaled and killed by a bayonet than ever dealing with some of the nerve agents that those 74 Deltas are prepared to deal with. Okay, like I just, nope. I'd rather burn alive. I would, I would rather drown. They are just the worst. Let me, okay, there's one. I don't know the name of it. There's one, um, and what it is, it's a nerve agent. Obviously, it affects the brainstem and the whole nervous system. But when it's obviously it's other odorless, colorless, tasteless, people think that a gas attack is like a fog rolling in and mustard, sometimes chlorine. Yeah, but chlorine just goes to the lowest point. So you just got to get high ground. Um, but this nerve agent, I don't know what it is. I don't think it's VX. Uh, what it does is it's pretty much once you move a muscle in your body, it causes it to spasm 
with as much force as, as your body can apply. So let's say I'm standing there, it's in my system, I don't know it's in my system, and I bend my finger. Well, now my finger will lock and cramp to the point that it snaps the bones in my finger. Obviously, I'm gonna react, I'm gonna go, ow! And as soon as I move my arm, my bicep is going to snap, uh, whatever, fibia, tibia, I don't know what, what is up here. I, I'm not great with bones, but it's then this part of my arm is gonna snap. And then I'm gonna, ah! And I'm gonna go like that and like, make a noise. And now my diaphragm collapses. My look, it's the worst like it so it just sounds terrible like and that's just one of them that i've heard about from 74 deltas fuck that it's awful um it's terrible uh so sup have you heard of the usmc's force design 2030 and if so what's your opinion i have not heard i want to look into that now force design 2030 I, 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 we've had class lately, uh, and now they've graduated, so I'll have a little bit more free time so I can actually look into the stuff. Ask at and um, It's Bragg. Definitely saw a clip where something hit a flare. Did something hit a flare? I want to check this clip out. I, like, I can probably analyze, judging by the explosion, what... I can at least eliminate some things. Um, I, I don't know if I can tell you what it is, but I can probably tell you what it isn't. That's a name I've not heard in a long time. Good old Vermin Supreme, man. Oh, shit. I hate it when it does that. I go to scroll down and it just gets to a point and it's just like douche and drops all the way to the bottom. 0311 is USMC Rifleman for Infantry. There we go. I knew that. What type of soldier should be terrified when you get enlisted? 22 Fox? Or F-22. Why are you so cocky if you haven't gotten a kill? You've killed balloons. Um, what type of soldier should be terrified? Should you should be terrified of when you get enlisted. I, I'm trying to understand the question. Hang on, I'll, I'll get back down to it. I'm still scrolling back up to find out my spot. Oh my God, there's still so many. Okay, there was the flare one. All right, info you uh, find out on the cell phone outages will be helpful. We did experience three major solar flares in the last 24 hours. I was told this year is like one of the worst solar storms that like the earth has experienced in a long time. So we'll see. Thoughts or know about the Boeing YAL-1, the laser airliner. I've heard of it. The 747 with a laser on board. It was a chemical. Uh, they used a chemical to create the laser. Ironically enough, when I was talking about like making the joke about Hell stuff and, and White Sands missile range, that was also a chemical laser, which is kind of cool. Um, interesting idea. Hard to replicate and the reason why it's hard to or excuse me hard to use in combat 747 is a very large slow moving target it takes a lot of prep to get up in the air it takes a lot of fuel to get it there So by the time you were able to get it somewhere to do anything it probably was gonna be too late. So Even from the UK we got the UK in here AT&T says not cyber attack. I will check. I Haven't read all about it F-22 was originally day one fighter and not supposed to replace F-15. F-22 get in break stuff and get out with the B-1 and B-2. The F-15 is for the long fight according to the 70s development. So I agree with you. Um, I, I feel like the F-22 was just America's like, because we can't. And um, no one else had a stealth fighter. And we're like, we do. So we built it. Um, I'll be honest with you, with, with the amount of firepower we have in our, our uh, inventory, I can understand why they're getting rid of the 22. I don't like it, but I can understand it because the F-15 is cheaper, more cost effective. It doesn't need stealth if you have it go with a growler and we strike package everything we put together. So, I mean, obviously, if we're going to go fight you, we're going to have growlers, We're gonna, which a growler as a radar guy is the most terrifying shit I've ever fucking heard of. If you don't know what an F-18 growler is, that motherfucker, when it's overhead, you can't even use your garage door opener. Let me put it to you that way. Like that thing, or it can open your garage door for you. Like, the amount of electronic warfare that is on board a goddamn growler is terrifying. It can make you not see an entire formation of nuclear bombers that are headed right at you, if it wants to. Or it can make you see a large flock of birds. Or it can make you see hundreds, thousands of aircraft coming at you. It, it's just, the things that that growler can do are terrifying. Um... The Moscow mash. What type of soldier? Okay, so this one I want to get back with. Federation Airspace says, what type of soldier you should be terrified of when you get enlisted? 
I think he's asking. Oh, okay, I, I I had to wrap my brain around it. So, like, if you're enlisted and you meet a soldier, like, who should you be terrified of? Um, the quiet ones. Uh, oftentimes, foreigners. Um, and by foreigners, I mean like the the Filipinos. Um, Samoans aren't foreigners, but they kind of fall into that category. Um, quiet little white dudes. Um, quiet. Uh, black dudes, uh, it's the ones that beat their chest and like I'm, I'm a fucking badass. I'm from fucking South Central or you know whatever. Like they 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 put on a good facade. Those are the first ones that freeze up in a firefight. Meanwhile, that kid who plays Dungeons and Dragons and WoW and shit on the weekend, he is laying waste and stacking bodies. Those are the ones you need to be afraid of. One of the best one of the best soldiers I ever had was a little little Filipino kid named Makoko, and Makoko is part of the reason I'm deaf. But that's a long story. And uh, Makoko was one of the best soldiers I ever had, and he was super quiet. I watched this kid fall down a mountain, like the whole thing. Not not like, not like like a hill, a whole fucking mountain. He tumbled like 300 yards uh, down this goddamn mountain. His ankle swelled up like a grapefruit, and he still wouldn't put down his rifle and let somebody else carry it. I was like, kid's a boss. Like, he's a beast. I, I love Makoko, man. I hope he's doing well. Okay, 0311 is Rifleman. I'm, I'm trying to stay on this herd of navies, considering reactivating the Zumwalt program because of what's happening in the Red Sea. They're garbage and cost more than a carrier and B cruisers for life. Your thoughts? Um, I think they should experiment with it. I really do. Um, they spent a lot of money on the Zumwalt program, and you never know what something can do until you put it out there. So I think they should keep the Arley Burke that are there and man like one Zumwalt and send it over there and see what it does. Obviously the system on board the Aegis is capable, but we wanna see when it's actually put under punishment, can it do the job? I think we're getting real world testing out of Yemen and I think it's a wonderful opportunity for the Navy. Uh, actually, I I, there was a Navy Admiral who recently said, this is the most combat the United States Navy has seen since World War II. And he's fucking right. Um, like naval combat, like they're actually shooting down shit with boats instead of like sending planes in to go fucking send somebody to factory settings. So I thought that was really cool. Like what a time to be alive. Let the kid eat. Radar for field artillery. Hey, 13 Romeos. The Romeo class is right across from my class. So it's like they put the Patriot radar brains and the FA radar brains right next to each other. Is it sarin gas? I don't know. Is it Nova 6? Isn't that from like Black Ops? My dad's a retired Eagle Keeper from the Air Force. I love the F-15. It's just... It's just America saying, fucking try me. That's what I love about the F-15. That's why he's like a cool, calm, collect, like, I know I'm the shit character. That's why I went with that, with the F-15. Do your 92 Yankees get asked for bayonet BOMs? I don't know what a BOM is. I've, I've never heard of that, but... I'm trying to figure out what a BOM is. That's going to drive me nuts. I'm, I'm watching the chat, trying to see, because I got the chat like actually scrolling on the left, and then I have the chat that I'm looking through on the right. Um, I don't know. There's an ongoing cyber attack in the system that connects medical facilities to insurance companies that started in 21? Really? I know that, so the reason why the bill of materials, I didn't, okay, now I see that on this left side. Bill of materials. I've never seen a bill of materials. Is that like a list of major end items? Doesn't the F-15 have a thrust to weight ratio of 1.4? Yes, it's greater than one. It's pretty much a rocket ship. Just so you guys know, most aircraft that are out there, there's, I think it's the F-15. I think there's a Sioux that is the same way. I think there's a MIG that's the same way, but pretty much what it means is if you chop the wings off and it was in the air, it could still get lift with just its fucking engines, which is super cool. Um, so the reason I was going to tell you this, uh, the reason why the United States military doesn't allow thumb drives in their computers is uh, I think it was 2007, 2008, maybe um, there was a widespread virus um, all over the uh like literally had infected like two-thirds of all electronic devices 
because it was just put out there, but no one knew it was infecting their devices. It was just out there, just hanging out. It was waiting for a specific place. Um, and eventually, somebody took a thumb drive and plugged it in in a Iranian nuclear reactor. It had infected almost all devices on the planet, and someone took a device that was infected and plugged it into an Iranian nuclear reactor. And then the system activated. Uh, it was just waiting to be paired with the right code. And as soon as it was, uh, I can't remember, I think they like shut down one of the reactors and started playing like fucking dirty deeds by ACDC over the loudspeakers and shit. Like it was, but that's why we don't do that. Um, F-15 is one of the only jets like saying, nah, dying is gay. <laughs> I remember that. Um, I use 11 Bravo for a catch-all for infantry. It's fun to pick on the Marines till they want to rumble. They don't fight fair. No, of course they don't fight fair. Look, I'm sorry. I, I got to give this one to the Marines. Fighting fair is for losers. Like my friend the fat electrician says, it's never a war crime the first time. Just just bend the rules a little bit. Just just bend them. Damn PC keeps pausing here. Neighbors on his Wi-Fi again. Oh man, I, I jumped back down. I'm trying to trying to catch up, guys. Anyway, oh no, that, I'm I'm still above that. Okay. Line cross your services requested to repel the solist automatons. Time to spread some managed democracy on oh, Zubird. Let's go. I I have hell divers. I I just haven't been on, man. I I've been so damn busy. Okay, well let me scroll up anymore. I use Lemon Bravo for oh catch all. All right, I, I had that. Trying to catch up. EA 18 Growler makes Santa real every December. Yes, it, that, I, on it, is that really where it comes from? I, I'm not being a smart ass. Like, that makes sense for them to just fly an F-18 across the U.S. Making everyone think that it's a fucking man in a sled with reindeer. AWACS versus J-Stars, Air versus Ground used with Patriots. So, um... Eventually, the systems will be coming online. We're not there yet where all sensors are tied in together. Like, we have Link 16 right now, and if you know what that is, you'll 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 get it. Um, but imagine a Link 16 you can shoot from. So AWACS out there, sees target, gets missile acquisition, fires that Patriot unit's missiles at that target, guides it in the whole way. It's fucking, it's chef's kiss. It's hard to do. It's really fucking hard to do, especially like passing off tracks. So like fire missile, Patriot guide it to its known location. Then AWACS grab it, Patriot release it, and it takes it all the way in. Like that's another thing that's supposed to be in the capability realm, but we're not there yet. It's a really, it's a really hard undertaking. Don't care what you say. Everyone will jump on the highest place they can when a Cobra rolls through a room. Yes, that's a real story from Thailand. I fucking would. So I... I didn't know this. They have Cobras in Afghanistan. I wouldn't have believed you unless I had seen it. Like, okay, I didn't know this. Every snake in Afghanistan can kill you. They have no non-venomous snakes in, in that country. Um, I saw tree vipers, pit vipers. I had a tree viper before I knew that they were gonna, like, could kill me. I, had a, I was just chilling in the tower and I watched a tree viper go right across my boots. I was like, oh, green snake, cool. Didn't even think anything of it. Yeah, that could have killed me. Because uh, I don't mind snakes. Spiders? Fuck spiders. I don't do spiders. But, um... We were doing a TCP, and my buddy Face, not like Face from the A-Team, like on his Texas ID, he looked like Leatherface. Man had to sneak up on a glass of water. I love Face. He, I'd say right now, if you wanted me to take a gun to a gunfight or Face to a gunfight, I'm picking Face nine times out of ten. The man, he fights like crazy. I love Face. But um, big old black snake coming across the road. And so he throws a rock at it. And this thing coils up, opens its hood, and like hisses at us. And I was like, that's... I didn't know they had fucking cobras in this country, man. And uh, Face brings up his saw. He had a saw, but it was wolf hooked and gangster gripped on the side. Like an old, like, I don't know, fucking Tommy gun or something. I don't know. But it worked for Face. And he brought up his saw because he was going to blow a few holes in it. And the Afghani guy was like, no, 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 no. And like, told him to put his weapon down, threw a couple of rocks, and then it left. I guess it's bad luck to them to kill a cobra or something. I don't know. And Face was like, man, I was going to skin that thing and put its skin around my helmet. Because Face is just that way. Uh, but I didn't know they had cobras in Afghanistan. After that, I was very careful walking through bushes. 2111 AK-91 Fox. So, Fueler, what's your favorite individual crew serve weapon system? Oh, it's got to be Modus. So, okay. Crew served Modus. M2 Heavy Barrel 50 caliber machine gun. It's, it's, it's just perfection. We've used it for almost 100 years. Like, it came... I, if you had nothing else in World War II except for 1911s and M2s, we still would have won. Okay, let me put it to you that way. Like, the M2 is just, 
it's it's perfection in motion it's reliable it's powerful it fires dirty it fires wet it fires cold it fires in heat it's just it's beauty in motion i love that weapon system the only downside is it's fucking heavy they say you know well it's the airborne version still like with the tripod and everything in the 1940s still like 800 pounds but that's the lightweight airborne version the non-lightweight version is like 1200 pounds so my dudes just piss on it you ain't wrong oh 2111 is armor my bad my bad an individual i loved my m14 i had an m14 ebr in afghanistan i love that thing it was a good rifle. it was a comfortable rifle that's that is the reason i own a 308 still like i own a 308 because i got so comfortable with the ballistics of that round um HLC, what's your opinion on the German army ramping up its military and deploying troops to other countries since World War II? I wouldn't worry about it too much. Honestly, um, we could use the help. Uh, we're Between our recruiting issues, our retention issues, um, everyone else is going to have to start helping out cover our missions because we can't be the world police. We're starting to get stretched too thin. I wonder when the Zumwalt's will get guns that actually work. I didn't know the Zumwalt's didn't even have Seawiz on them. Did you guys know that? Zumwalt's do not have Seawiz. Fucking waste. There was plans to develop an autonomous drone ship landed with loaded with SAMs for strike group defense. What happened to that? Oh, you're talking about the fucking... Um... Oh my god, what's it called? Uh... Oh, dude. I want to say armorer ship, but that's wrong. Um... I don't know what it's called. Oh my god, it's going to drive me nuts. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to drop it in. Um, but yeah, I have no idea. Some walls have big cracks in them and can't go out in rough seas. I did not know that. F-15 is like one of those only just to say. Oh yeah, I saw that. So I'm trying to catch up, guys. And that just brought me way down. My old ass figured on Discord, it's like AOL, but different color. <laughs> Bro, the Discord, I'll have to show you guys here in a second. Do you also drink the pickle juice? Yes, fucking pickles are delicious. When I'm on my diet and I'm paying attention to my diet, pickles are considered a free food. I can eat those whenever I want. I fuck with pickles. Um, Do I like cheese? Absolutely. I fucking love cheese. Marines farming enemies for HP for over 200 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, good stuff. That's why if I could turn back time, I join the damn Marines. The Zum is, which sucks. Like, sorry, someone said that the Zumwalt is, is shameless, shamefully flawed, which sucks because Admiral Zumwalt is a fucking G. He gave the Navy beards, citing a very little known regulation that says that it, that, that commanders can sign away regulations when they contribute to the degradation of morale and welfare of a force. And he's like, let them have fucking beards. In the 1970s, he just went boop. Admiral Zumwalt, a fucking G. I love it. That's all I know. Face is a Chad, bro. Face is a serious Chad. I love Face, man. He's my dude. Uh, his name is Haynes, but we just... Uh, originally, like, we, we eventually went with Face, but originally it was Leatherface. We'd literally call him Leatherface. On his Texas ID, that's what he fucking looked like. Uh, but I love Face, man. I still talk to him. I fuck with pickles. HLC 2024. We're there. Oh shit, caught it on live. You here, hi? Arsenal ship. There we go. Thank you, Aubrey. Oh, and then James said it. <laughs> Rapid Dragon. I don't know if we'll ever get a chance to use it. That's just a lot of firepower in a very slow, easy to hit target. Don't get me wrong. I love the C-130. I love the C-17. I can't remember if it's out of a C-17 or a C-130. I love both those aircraft for different reasons. Um... That's a pretty easy to hit target hanging out above you. Now, if we have air dominance, yeah, okay, fucking send it. We can we can put a whole lot of pain in a whole lot of targets real fast. Do we have any amnesty boxes from being deployed? Um, so funny story about that. Uh, I don't know how. To this day, I have no idea how. So when we were coming out of Afghanistan, we went to Manas, Kyrgyzstan. If you guys have ever been there, gorgeous, gorgeous place. Um, Kind of looks like Chernobyl, though. Like, I didn't see any local population. They had, like, buildings, but they were, like, condemned. And it looked like fucking Chernobyl. I'm not even gonna lie to you. But you could see the Himalayas in the distance, and it was, like, nice. And obviously, we weren't being shot at like we were in Afghanistan. So it was fucking vacation. Loved it. 
Um, but we go through Manas, Kyrgyzstan. So we flew Grey Tail, which is a C-17 or well, any government aircraft, out of Afghanistan and landed in Kyrgyzstan, which is like a four-hour flight. We get to Kyrgyzstan, we go through out processing, we turn in all our ammo, all that shit, and then we go from there um, on a civilian airliner. And then we'll actually have to go through customs and shit like that. But like we have our rifles on us, just no ammo. And there was a uh, super chat from Freedom Fiend. Did I get that one? I'm working my way through, Mrs. Line Crosser. Did I get the one from Freedom Fiend? Did I miss one? Hold on. So we're working our way through customs. I'm going to see if I can find it. I don't see one from Freedom, Freedom Fiend, Mrs. Line Crosser, yet. Um, so we're getting through customs there and they x-ray my bag cool and they're like there's a round in there it was literally at the bottom of one of my mag pouches there was a 762 in there and i was like well okay you guys have a really good x-ray uh, here's the round here you can have it and we get back to fort carson and this is probably a week goes by give or take maybe two weeks and all of a sudden the cops are there eod is there and they shut down 122 infantry we're like what the fuck just happened and they were like, eventually, I think it was uh, later that day after everything got cleared, they uh, they brought the whole battalion in and they're like, hey, um, I like that you guys turn in things at the amnesty box. That's why it's there. But you should probably tell somebody if you put an M67 high explosive fragmentation grenade in there. And like in my in my head, I was like, how the fuck did that get through when I they had me tear apart my bag for a 762? Was it inside of him? That's a, I mean, those grenades are not small and they're not light. How the fuck did you get a frag grenade through Kyrgyzstan? Look at this nerd. I teal. I'm not playing Star Citizen tonight. Freedom Fiend. Now I see it. Now I see it. Okay. My brother will be graduating sub school with honors. What's more, it'll be the 100th anniversary of the day PO1 Baralt. I, I'm not familiar with the story. I don't know every single one of these stories. Won the Medal of Honor, so he's getting commendations from an admiral. Hell yeah! Fucking hell yeah, Freedom Fiend! Fucking, here, let's give you some horns. I, I, don't, I wish I could do more. My headphones shut off again. But, yeah, dude. That's fucking awesome, Freedom Fiend. Tell your brother, I said hi. Actually, I want to do something nice for him. Is he a fan? I need to know that. If he is, shoot me a DM in Discord. Let me know it's you. All right? If he is a fan. If he's not a fan, cool. Best of luck to a man of fucking hope Hope. hope for the best for that kid. Uh, do great things. Submariners are weird. I'm sorry. They just have too much nitrogen in their blood. Every Submariner I've met, and Dr. Kozak, who I play video games with a lot, is awesome. But he's a Submariner. He's fucking strange. Love the guy. Great dude. Strange. What happens if Poland, Ukraine, and the rest of Eastern Europe starts making nukes? What happens if Eastern Europe starts making WMDs? Honestly, I really don't think anything will change. Like, whenever someone starts a nuclear program, the first thing the U.S. does is a sanction. If you have everything already prepared and you are prepared for U.S. sanctions, you can hold out for quite some time. It's kind of a moot point at this at this point in life. Oh God, David! Would you intercept me. I'd intercept me. Thank you, David. Fifty dollars from David. So Dover AFB is having an air show May eighteenth, nineteen. Any change you could bring a Patriot or part of it over as a static display? The Golden Knights and F thirty five demo team will be there. At Dover? Where's Dover at? Hold on, let me see. Let me check how far Dover is. Where is Dover? Oh, that's, that's way too far away. That's in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think there's an air defense unit in North Carolina that might be able to help you out. Delaware. Oh, it's Delaware. Sorry, I saw Pennsylvania. It's Delaware. Um... There might be a unit in North Carolina able to help you out. Look for uh, 108th Brigade, Air Defense Artillery Brigade. They honestly might be able to send you a static display, and that would look really good for them. Eric, what are your thoughts on the Rapid Dragon system? I, I think it's a great idea. 
But until I see it in action, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm, I wasn't part of any of those tests. I didn't get a chance to see what it can do. I haven't done enough research about it. So me, it's like, cool, a pallet of explosives on board a very large, slow-moving aircraft, which sounds really cool until you realize if you don't have air dominance or air supremacy, that's a very quick way to lose a whole lot of money. So um, applicability in a near-peer threat or a three-dimensional warfare, very minimal. Applicability against somebody that we are already fucking dominating, great. Speaking of the Discord, what's the story on you wearing the pink <laughs> okay the pink maid outfit i used to do these things called mail call i took down my my p.o box for some some personal reasons I, I may put it back up in the near future i i don't know i gotta talk to the missus uh and um people would send me all sorts of stuff and i'd open it on video hey man thank you so much for this you know they'd send me letters and stuff and you know i don't want to put people's names out there but i'd be like hey this is what the letter said and um they sent me the pink maid outfit and I was like, oh my God. And I like in the middle of like, I'm going to go put this away. My wife saw it. Did you intercept me? Gappers! <laughs> I'd intercept Thank me. you so much, man. $99.99 from Gapes. Love your stuff. WPNS 175 is old. Rocket <laughs> Dragon is the product of engineers trying to war. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Was that from the fat electrician? Fucking Rapid Dragon is the process of um, engineers trying to war. I like that. That is a great analogy. Um, yeah, so my wife, she saw it and she goes, you're going to wear that right now on camera. And I was like, okay, thanks. And so I did. Holy cow. All right, hold on. I want to go back up and make sure. So Dover Air Force Base. Honestly, dead serious. If you are in the military and you want a static display, get a hold of 108th Brigade. It may be a little bit late. And like, you know, they may want earlier notice than that, but 108th Brigade might be able to supply one. Dead serious. <clears throat> one gram of uranium, 235 calories, 20 billion calories. What? What? It's Dover there. Oh. What do I think of Armored Core 6? Haven't played it. So this is the thing. I love the idea of big mech games. I love it. I don't... I can appreciate the art style. It's the same thing with a lot of games out there. I can appreciate the effort and the art style and the design. Like, I think that all gamers should look at games from that perspective. Like, I enjoy the art style. I enjoy, you know, the storytelling. Like, we like games for different reasons. I am a Titanfall junkie. I like robots to be the way that I view them. I perceive them. Big, lunky, chunk, chunk, chunk. Like, that's that's the way that I want them to feel. Armored Core games are really cool in their own respect, but they're, I think it's Konami style, um, where they like just stand there and they have jets and they kind of slide left and right across the map and stuff. And again, I appreciate the art style. It's just not my bag. Um, so maybe I'll look more into Armored Core. I just, I had very, very little time lately. Uh, I've played um, Helldivers once once since i was given it by tiger teal what's your thoughts on europe stepping up for ukraine while the u.s has its head up its ass with electoral crap hmm. seems like europe is waiting on the u.s rather than stepping up to home plate i don't know um i genuinely feel like the world has gotten so used to the united states like footing the bill and putting all our efforts into things that when we're not all in on things they're not all in because they don't want to lose if that makes sense. Like they don't have the assets to throw in there like we do and lose them. If we throw in jets, that's cool. We still have the first and second largest air forces in the world and fourth. If we throw in tanks, that's fine. We have literally thousands more. Um, if we throw in artillery, that's fine. We literally have thousands more. Um, but the rest of the world doesn't have that. So unless, so the way they look at it is not, I'm not paying. If he's not paying, that's not the way they look at it is it's more, okay. If America jumps in and throws a bunch more at this, then I'm more confident that, that they're going to win this conflict. So I'm willing to risk my equipment as well. But if America is not willing to risk, willing to risk more then I'm not willing to risk more. Does that make sense? Like it isn't like a, they're holding it over somebody's head. It's just, it's a risk-reward thing for them. All right. 
Yes. Oh, it's treat. It is protocol four. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me. They haven't heard it yet. I'm gonna try and lift it very, very quietly, and I'm gonna shake it in front of the camera. Just watch the dogs. Just watch them. Ready for it? Want a cookie? I don't think he was awake yet. He's limping. He, his leg fell asleep. That's my good boy. And that's my good girl. Here, you get one more because they're small. All right, and good girl. Good puppies. All right, go lay down. Good boy. All right, go on. Go lay down. All right. That meme may be my fault. Weapons, you son of a bitch. <laughs> love your stuff. Weapons, 175 is old. Rapid Dragon is the product. Oh, I love that. I still love that, uh, Gappers. All right. Oh, hold on. Trying to come back up. All right, all right, I think I've caught up. Getting fucking nerdy now. My th uh, thoughts on the battle mechs from the Mech Warrior Battletech franchise is basically 20 100 ton mechs that shoot lasers and shit. So those those are old school ones. I think was that the one that on PS2 that came with like the giant like controller for it that had like f fucking switches for turning on every part of it and shit. Like, like I played that game for like an hour and I moved my mech a foot. Like that game was so complex, but it was such a cool concept. It's just people couldn't afford it at that time, and I would really like to do that. Have you played Ready or Not? You think you'd, I think you'd like it. I have played Ready or Not. I have Ready or Not. Every once in a while, I just get a wild hair up my ass, and I'm like, I fuck with Ready or Not. Um, I haven't played it in a while. I know there's been a lot of updates to it, so maybe. Titanfall is the best mech game. I don't know. I, I, I genuinely think so. I feel like they, they really captured at least my interpretation of the way a giant mech should feel. I, I hope that makes sense to people. Get drunk? I can't. I can't. I'm a... Uh, I'm on some meds, guys. I'm going to tell you. Um, when your doctor tells you you can't drink on these meds, it's probably because he's a fucking square and doesn't want you to have a good time. But, uh, yeah, no, I had a beer on these meds. And with one beer, I wake up in the morning with a uh, hangover times 10. HLC, HLC can join us in the Titanfall 3 psych ward, bro. I'll be there. I would... I have written... I Like, I have a Twitter, but it's, for, it's like a Smurf Twitter. I don't have any of my stuff on there. I have written to Respawn. Asking them, hey, how many signatures on a petition or how much would it cost for us to buy the rights to Titanfall so we can make a Titanfall 3? Because crowdsourcing is literally what made Star Citizen. So I would crowdsource it. Get a whole bunch of, like, bring on developers and shit like that. We would write our own story, make it really good, and just, boom, crank out a Titanfall 3. HLC found your channel when you made a short when Finland joined the EU. Knowing you like aircraft, I live near an airbase. In Washington State, and my favorite plane is the A-12 Archangel, cousin to the SR-71. The hold on, I'm drawing a blank on both of those. Oh, well, I know the SR-71, but I'm drawing a blank on the A-12. Oh, it looks oddly like the SR-71. Huh. Learn something new every day. Um, hold on. There we go. I'm trying to catch up, guys. But thank you so much, Donald Deluxe. I appreciate it. Um, I would actually I've never heard of the Archangel A12, and I'm gonna have to look at it. Dude, Mech Warrior, oh is best. Need to get HLC playing ground branch or ready or not. I, I fuck with ready or not. Mech Warrior 5 is really good. Hell diving. I, I I enjoy hell divers. Sorry, um, we played a shit ton last year. We did check previous live streams. Yeah, I I'll be honest with you, Teal. Like I haven't really like um done a video game live stream in a while. Dude makes amazing videos. Thank you so much, Yank Thirty Three. I haven't done a video game one in a while. It's because the video game ones, and it's not that they don't do very well. It's just I don't keep a lot of viewer retention, um, which is fine, you know, but I, I want to talk with you guys. Like, that's that's this is that's why I do these live streams is so, like, I can interact and answer your questions, you know, talk about y'all. Xbox, I, I fuck with Xbox. Um, Xbox and PC, that's my life, man. But I will tell you, after learning how to build a PC... I will never buy another console again. I love my Xbox. I love it. 
We even got the Quest 3. I fuck with the Quest 3. But um, after learning how to build this, I'll never need anything else. I just put new parts in it. It's it's all plug and play. It's super easy. I I absolutely love it. Um, the big ass unit. Oh yeah. Please look up the X02 from Ace Combat. All right, I'll look it up. I'm not gonna just sit here looking up. So those of you saying Titanfall for the win, hang on, I want to show you something. X02 Wyvern. It looks like a Su-57 without vertical tail stabilizers and canards. But that version, that picture has vertical. They're not really vertical. They're, I don't, It's a weird looking thing. It looks like a Su-57 and a Su-35 or Su-34 had a baby with a Eurofighter Typhoon. It's like a weird looking design. It's kind of cool though. So for my Titanfall fans out there, I want to show you guys this. <clears throat> And you can see it, it says Protocol 3, and it's got obviously a pilot helmet. And then tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, I'm finishing my Borderlands leg. I got my Psycho right here, I got my Necromancer here, and I got my Vault Symbol here. Um, but I'm getting it all filled in tomorrow. Uh, I'm adding in the Gunzerker, I'm adding in Krieg, I'm adding in Claptrap. And then the rest is getting filled in with uh, siren tattoos. Uh, that's that's what I went with. That was like my vision. And she, the girl does amazing work, but God, she drives that fucking ink in. Oh my God, it hurts. Uh, her name on Instagram is Peaches and Ink, but there's a underscore between Peaches and and then and, and Ink. Uh, her name is Megan. She does phenomenal work, but she drives that ink in, boy. It oh, it's gonna pop. It's gonna look gorgeous. But she, holy shit, man. Do you think the world looks at the U.S. sideways for getting involved in Yemen, et cetera, because kind of wishy-washy on Ukraine? So here's the thing. The U.S. has a kind of zero-tolerance policy when it comes to global trade. And the reason we have that is because we care about our bottom dollar. The U.S. exports a lot of shit, but we import a lot of shit, too. And if global trade is affected... It affects all of us, which makes things more expensive on us, which affects how much the military has to spend on things and, you know, how much the government has to spend on things. And it just hyperinflates everything. So we really like protecting global trade. Um, the whole wishy-washy on Ukraine thing, I... Personal opinion, not the opinion of any government entity individual personal opinion here it irritates me like as a human that we promised we would take care of them and we're still half-assing this like i this is the thing guys it, the way i grew up and maybe it's just me your word is everything you know you shake on it that is as good as a fucking notary in my book when you shake on something and i I will never be anything but a man of my word. That's what I try and be. There was an individual reached out to me and he tried for a long time and I'm so sorry I didn't see it until the last minute. Um, in the spirit of transparency, part of the reason I changed distributors is there was a few dropped orders here and there. Again, nothing against that guy. Um, just there was a few dropped orders. So that's part of the reason I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in a different direction. Again, still a great guy. I just, maybe, maybe my workload was overwhelming him. I don't know. I'm not trying to make excuses, but uh, so he reached out to me and I finally saw it in my comment section. So what did I do? Because he said he ordered and he paid. Showed me that he ordered and he paid. And I was like, I got you. We put together an order that night and sent it to him. Because I want you to get the stuff you guys ask for. So speaking of that, uh, real quick, uh, real quick pause. So I know you guys want more designs. I know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's, it's a bit of a slow process. I just started up with Bunker Branding. And for them... To have more designs, the juice has to be worth the squeeze, right? So they have to make, an, like, I have to make enough sales of my merch for them to be like, okay, we can invest this amount of money to get new stencils, new this, new that. Like, that's that's the way they work. This month, I've only been with them one month. The numbers, at least on my end, from what I see, look good. I don't know what numbers they're looking for. I have no idea what numbers they're looking for, but I'm going to reach out to them at the beginning of next month. 
I do currently have a graphic designer working on an FAFO design. You guys have asked for it for literal months. I am putting together an FAFO design. That is gonna probably be the next one that we launch. I'm refining it right now. He is working on it probably as we speak. Um, I've got a couple of ideas out there. He's gonna hit me with all of them and we're gonna see which one looks the best and that's the one that we're gonna launch. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Um, that was Steel Battalion for what you described, Battletech to strategy. Vehicle combat is mostly keyboard and mouse. Look up the Mad Cat Mech. All right, I'll take a look, I'll take a look. Mad Cat Mech. Oh, that looks cool as shit. That actually looks that that looks I as long as it doesn't move around like the the Konami style, like the sliding all over the map, that's just for me that that it's not my interpretation of the way the mech should move. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just because obviously there is no mechs out there um to compare it to. Like when people compare Forza, yeah, it's because those cars actually exist, but I can't can't say, well, the mechs are supposed to move like this. This is just my interpretation of them. Um, I guess my buff shirt and intercept shirt will do for now, but I need that FAFO shirt. All right. Trying to get Matt Tardo from Speak the Truth on Unsub. Any way you could help? He's a former 18 Bravo train guys in Ukraine. He's one of the guys over there died holding... Wait. One of his guys over there died holding uh, Advidka. Uh, has lots of stories too. Matt Tardo from Speak the Truth. I will look into him. So I will tell you this. I, I know the guys at Unsub. Um, I will talk to them. There's a lot of variables that go into getting on Unsub. Uh, but I, I can't say yes. I can't say no. Um, I'll take a look. Matt Tardio. Tardio, not Tardo. I, mm, welcome to Hooked on Phonics with HLC. I don't know how to fucking read. I'm the smartest dumb person you've ever met in your life. But that's kind of all air defenders in general. I understand ducting radar theory, intercept dynamics, fucking wavelengths, wideband interference. Like, I understand all that shit. I, I understand probabilities of kill and fucking radar cross-sections. Like, all makes sense. But I can't read Tardio. Air defense in a fucking nutshell. All right, I got it in my notes. No, engineers are the smartest dumb people. I haven't met very many engineers, man. Just one of my bubble up here. Get good, nerd. Bro, Teal, I will try. My sister does like, uh, we were playing uh, Enshrouded, so she, she enjoys it. I was showing her how everything works. and All right, look up the XO2S. I will look up. This is the last thing I'm looking up. Crowdsourcing can work. A dedicated fan, City of Heroes, came back four years due to fans and went official about a month back with NC's Blessing. Really? X02S. Wyvern. Why does it have those like humps in the back? They're not intakes. It's a very strange, and it's got the inverted wing design, which I always thought was cool. I just, I think it's also very impractical, which is why people don't really use it. Um, it's a cool looking aircraft. It really looks like they, they took a Su-34, put canards on it, gave it the wings from a Bearcat and a jetpack? I don't I don't know how that works, but A12 Archangel is the direct ancestor. Oh, I did not know that. Mm hmm I gotta scroll back up. Hey, I fucking full send. Sorry, I was reading that. I gotta read that one back in a second. I don't know why I read bottom to top, but I need to go top to bottom. Uh, Blue Jay said, you heard the story. The B-52 design proposal was done in a hotel room. The first prototype of the B-52 may be designed in a three-day weekend's alcohol involved. It was a crazy story. I had no idea, Blue Jay. Really? I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm, I'm gonna remember B-52 development. I'm gonna, uh, yeah. To the guy who wanted his bubble up here, same. Zachary. Thank you so much, guys. Did you see the news on the second? Oh, I heard about that. I heard about that. I don't have details yet. 
I heard about it literally from my comment section. I I was doing a graduation today. I was the master of ceremonies. I've been very busy trying to handle this, that. I'm also going fishing tomorrow morning. I got a new uh, prop because I broke it last week on my kayak. Yes, I kayak fish, but here in Oklahoma, it's all small ponds and tributaries. So a big boat is kind of pointless. So I have a kayak and it's got a little motor that sits between my knees. A little like, uh, I think it's a 50 pounds of thrust, little electric motor. I put the battery behind me and I just like cast out my line and just cruise across the lake. So I'm going tomorrow morning. So I had to put a new prop on it because I broke the last one. Uh, so been a little busy, guys. Russian incompetence on a whole new level. Can't wait for the next video release. I do plan on talking about it. We'll see. PC Master Race, you're not wrong. It just is. But like, I feel like PC parts have outstretched PC gaming. Like, okay. For those of you who don't know what I have in here, I'll give you my specs. Uh, I'm a little low on RAM. That's fair. That's I totally understand. But I have a Ryzen 9 5900. I'm an AMD guy, not an Intel guy. I don't feel like changing my motherboard for every new CPU I get. I'm sorry. I have AM4. I may have to upgrade to AM5 one day, but right now AM4 is working fine. Um, I have a 1,000 <clears throat> watt power supply, uh, obviously. Um, a 4090. Uh, GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Um... I mean, that's about it. Tower cooler, uh, three terabytes of storage. But, I mean, it's a pretty good computer. Like, I mean, the GPU is good enough. But I built it. I started out with a Ryzen 7 2700X, a GeForce RTX 30 or 2060, excuse me, 2060, and a 500 watt power supply and 12 gigs of RAM. So, I've done some upgrades. HLC, first off, love your videos. Buff is the best, but every time I play his combat, I'll hear you have 22 voice. Keep up the amazing content. Hang on. I haven't done these voices tonight. I got to hear myself to do the voices properly, so I apologize. Um, Would you intercept me? I'd intercept me. Hey, I actually have a consensus. I want to ask you guys a uh, real question because my wife and I have kind of a disagreement about it. Uh, nothing bad. Um, but I thought it was a good segue to use myself and say, hey, fourth wall break, and just use me speaking. Because for me, the benefit was people actually see what I look like. Because uh, there's a lot of people who have no idea what I look like. Um, but they see what I look like, and it's a good like fourth wall break character. My wife, on the other hand, disagrees, and she said that our fourth wall break character should be either my logo with my eyes and mouth or a picture of me where I use the eyes and mouth filter. So... Um, I just kind of want to know what you guys are feeling on that one. I'm going to keep scrolling down, keep answering. Need to get an episode of the Boneyard of Great Plains waiting for someone to fuck around. Ooh, there's a lot. Actually, that's not a half bad idea. I may fuck with the Boneyard. In a box 6x6x3. Six six i7 8700 with GTX 1650. Hey, GTX still fucking works, man. Mrs. HLC is correct, John Mink. That's fair. That's fair. I, I want you guys' honest opinions because I do things because you guys like it. Like, that's... I want you to know, like, I, I try and read the comments. There's always going to be haters. I don't fucking... I just tone them, tone them out unless I can use them for free content. Um, but you guys who actually enjoy this stuff, I want to tailor things so that you're still getting the same level of enjoyment. When, when you showed up the first day and you watched my first video and you watch my thousandth video and you're just like, man, this is still great. It's still great every time I look at it. And that's what I want to continue to deliver. Like, that's, that's what makes me happy at night. When will the 1911 join in the videos? I don't know. I, I love the 1911. I, okay. So I love the 1911 in the same way I love Iowa class battleships. Okay. For the time, phenomenal weapon system. Phenomenal. Reliable, robust a good magazine capacity, accurate, great weapon system for the time. Times changed, it got outdated in modern combat. It's still a beautiful gun, still a great collector piece. So could I do it for like a classic throwback? Absolutely. Um, as for modern ones, I don't know. I like, And I know that pisses off 1911 guys. Uh, I love the 1911. It's a great weapon system, but for the same weight and feel, I have a Springfield XD 45 that carries 13 rounds instead of the seven or maybe an eight round high capacity for a 1911. And it's not anything against the weapon. It's just 
1911. 2000, what, five is when this XD45 came out? 2002? So, just difference of years. 1911, Kimber, can I send you one? Wait, are you fucking serious? Wait, is it, like, legit? Because I can get an FFL. My first sergeant has an FFL. He can transfer it for me. I fuck with a nine. I don't have a 1911. I just haven't went and got one yet. I just bought me a 4570. I love my 4570. It's so much fun. HLC has the missileism when HLC goes on a 10-minute tangent about air defense and radar. <laughs> Sorry, man. Saw an A-10 got sent to the Boneyard. Thoughts? Um, I love the A-10. A-10s have helped save my life. And I don't know if I ever told that story. Um, we got literally pinned down. We showed up. 80 seconds was like, you guys want to get shot at? And we're like, yeah, fuck yeah, why not? I don't know if anyone's ever asked you that question. You want to get shot at? Fuck it. Like... That's, that's what we're here to do, right? Um, got pinned down, open open field, in a ditch, a uh, lot of fires. Uh, according to the local population, there was 40 of them. There was 15 of us. So heavily outgunned. Um, couldn't even get fire superiority. Couldn't even start to return fire. We were literally ducking the entire time because there was no low in fire. Uh, called for close air support. Apparently all close air support in Kandahar at that point in time was bored. First came in the Kiowas. They made a big mess of things. Like, I, Kiowas are cool. They just couldn't deal the punishment of an Apache. Like, it just, they couldn't put the, the bullets and the missiles exactly where they needed to go. Again, Kiowas, they did the job. Like, they started getting us that ability to fire, um, you know, get fire superiority. Uh, then A-10s came through. And I will tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this, from 400 yards away, give or take, it could have been as little as 380, uh, when an A-10 does a gun run on the ground uh, and you see it blow apart buildings and trees and all sorts of shit, you feel the ground shake 400 yards away. I don't know if you know that. I now do. Uh, just so you know. Uh, yes, somebody said friendly fire incidents. Mm. Also glad I was 400 yards away. Uh, and then after that, there was an Apache. Um... Her call sign, I have no idea who she is to this day. I have no idea what she looks like. Um, her call sign was Napalm 6. And eventually she learned to love our platoon. And Napalm 6 would uh, just kind of hover around and hang out, you know, in our AO. You know, if you need anything, Napalm 6 is right here. She had a, like a southern draw. I don't know if she was the gunner. I don't know if she was the pilot. But she was amazing. And Napalm 6, that woman's got to count. That Apache has caused a lot of damage. All right. <clears throat> 400 yards you'd still be be in the splash zone you're not wrong i mean it's it was, i fucking you want me to pull up google maps i might be able to find it, it unless it's updated it was bizarre che. um so i don't know a10 a great a great aircraft when it came out i feel like we can do better i really do and i'm not talking any shit about the gun the gun is still a great gun um the platform is what needs to be updated and i think that we can genuinely do better all right, is a combat engineer a grunt or not? Mm, depends on the application. So the combat engineers that I spent most of my time with, they walked everywhere, just like we did. In my book, they're a fucking grunt. But then there's combat engineers who are mounted all the time, and they just stay mounted, and they do route clearance. Those ones, while their job is dangerous, they're not necessarily a grunt. Um, grunts are ground pounders. You just spend all day out on foot, and ours did. All right, let me see. Hi, huge fan of your videos with the characters. Thank you, Kimmy Bear. I appreciate you being here. Will we ever see the Valkyrie hook up with the buff and throwback? <laughs> uh, maybe. Yes, the gaming and game types need a new evolution. I'm telling you, man. Like, right now with this setup that I have, I can play Star Citizen on max settings and watch a 4K video on my other screen and not even go past 50% usage. The most pounds of thrust jet F-14, 250,000 heavy, but can still leave the ground. Yeah, but the F-14, she was, I want to say she was like 70,000 pounds. That's just off the top of my head. I don't think that's accurate, but T minus X till boom pop 2.0. Is there another balloon up? I got to look into that. I, I hadn't heard about this. Ryzen 7, nuke box 64, gig RAM, ooh, 64. I need to up my RAM. I only got 32 right now and one terabyte SSD. That's what's up. 500 watts yeah no that was that was my old one man it was a 500 this is you know i got a thousand now we're getting there the poor man's pc is the console it's the thing i built cars for most of my life and when someone showed me 
how to build a PC. And I realized that, gentlemen, if you're out there, if you can build a carburetor, you can build a PC. It's literally that easy. And I can do a carburetor, most carburetors, with my fucking eyes closed. Literally four bolts on, or four screws on the bottom, pull off the, the thing, there's going to be a seal on there, there's going to be the floats, you pull out the pin for the floats, you got the two jets right there, unscrew the jets, you have the primary jet and the uh, idle jet, go ahead and swap those out, let's say you want to do a jet rebuild kit, you take your pipe cleaners, pop those bad boys in there right there, flip it over, unscrew the top of it, make sure that the float and the needle are good in inside there, this is the one for my old bike, tighten that back in, go ahead and put replace the jets, go ahead and run the file through there, make sure they're good to go, uh, go ahead and put the... Uh, float back in, pin through it, and then put the new seal on the bottom of the, the float bowl, close that, tighten it down, make sure the, the drip valve on the bottom is tight, and good to go. Put it back in. Boom. Like, if you can build a carburetor or rebuild a carburetor, you can absolutely build a PC. Use the AWACS for fourth wall. AWACS knows all. I, I want to figure out a character for the AWACS because it's widely used. That and the P8. I really want to get the P8 and the AWACS in the game, but... I haven't figured out the characters for it yet. Dude, your Eastwood impersonation is pretty on point. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't have any more lines than thank you. I'm sorry. 1911 Kimber, can I send you one? Loopy Droopy. As much as I love guns, man. Tell you what, shoot me a, shoot me a DM on Discord, Loopy Droopy. If you're serious about it. If you, you don't have to be, it's fine. If you don't want to send a 1911, I totally understand, dude. It's fine. But we got to do it the right way. You know, FFL transfer and like make sure that's all good to go. Uh, let me see. Hello. Because they don't make a 0.46. Hair transplant. Ooh. Ow. Ow. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, so... <clears throat> When you're, when you're upstairs with the big man, you know, before you, you come down here, he loads you in this chamber. And I remember it. You guys may not remember it. Um, but he loads you in this chamber and you get to pick out options. And, uh, you know, some of them come as a set. And it said, you can either keep your hair or you can have a big wang. See how you guys still got your hair. I know I made my choice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't help it. I, it's. It was a rare opportunity. I just, I fucking went for it. Uh, obviously, it's not true. Did the sailor and the VP actually talk? I have no idea. Uh, don't apologize. Men are so cute when they tiz them out. Nova. A10 saved yours. I love the A10. Like, we were very good with them. Off you're already getting shot at. Does the caliber really matter? <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh one of the first times I ever heard hisses. Uh it was actually an American 50 cal, believe it or not. We were in a location and the Taliban were really fucking smart. And they got in between, so like we were in this compound. There was a road way behind us. So the road is west, we are east of said road. Taliban went into a ditch between us. Pop shot it at the, the truck and then hit the ditch and took off. So now the truck is shooting at us. And we were there. And luckily there was a wall in between us. Um, and those mud walls actually do stop rounds pretty well. And I was sitting there and I was facing away from that wall. I was looking out into an open field, just pulling security middle of the night. And I see two tracers and I heard right over top of my head. And I ducked like a bitch. I ain't even gonna lie to you. And Sergeant G, God rest his soul, we lost him on that deployment. Um, he started laughing. He's like, oh, Long, those weren't even close to you, man. It was fucking close enough. Fuck you. Uh, why don't I do a roast session of foreign gear using your characters? New characters, Su-35, F-18, or S-300 versus Patriot. New characters and more content. Ooh. A roast session of enemy equipment. I like that idea. Adara? I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Sorry, people are rude. Don't worry, Mirandi. A10s or 88 Mike's friends. Hmm. The French side thing is way overblown and very annoying to me. You're not wrong. I, weapons, you're an A10 guy, aren't you? And I'm not even being a smart ass. Like, you were a crew chief or, or worked on them maintenance-wise. Have we had fratricide incidents? Yes. But we've also had fratricide incidents. Fratricide is considered blue on blue. We've had them with tanks. We've had them with artillery. We've had them with rockets. We've had them with Patriot. We've had them with aircraft. We've had them with mortars. Like, we, like it, it happens. The fog of war is very real. And especially when you bring that many toys to the party and you start calling for things. 
shit happens. It sucks. You know, you do the best you can. Sometimes things happen, you know. Felt the round, but felt the pressure of those rounds. Ooh. Oh, man. George Patton. Ch Chow Boy To Trung Si Long. I have no idea what that means, and I have no way to translate it. I'm sorry. Noah asks, how are call signs given? Oh, it really depends. Um, so, like, if you go through a DAFCO, which stands for Ar Air Defense Artillery Fire Control Officer, which is something our officers go through. If you go to a DAFCO school, um, they give you your call sign. And you just literally keep it forever. Um, pilots, I think they get theirs in school. And they just, that's what I'm going to go with. Um... My call sign, because I'm just a lowly guy, was really dependent on what position I was holding. So when I was with the Reaper platoon, I was Reaper, which is the platoon, one, which is first squad, and then I was um, the squad designated marksman. And they just went with like L for like long shot. So I was Reaper one Lima. That was my call sign. When I was on tanks, I was Delta, which is the company, 1-1, one, one, which is t first platoon's tank, number one, which is the lieutenant's tank. And I was Delta as the driver. And then there was Lima as the loader. And then there was fucking um, Delta 1 Golf, which is the gunner. And then Delta 1, or Delta 1-1, one, one, which is just the lieutenant, who's the tank commander. So that's how, like, we do call signs. Um, we do have abbreviated call signs. Um depending on where you're at, like each of our Patriot sites have a call sign. I don't know if they're classified, so I'm not going to say them. Um, but yeah, I had a call sign while I was overseas. Modern PCs are essentially Lego. Yeah, you're not wrong. Don't have to worry about chips popping out due to heat. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't build PCs back in the day. They're buried under too much dirt line in the Moscow mash. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like that. The P8, that's my old plane. I'll be honest with you, Gappers. I didn't even know the P8 existed. And then someone's like, why aren't you doing P8s? And I was like, what the fuck is a P8? And I looked it up and I was like, it's just it's just like a radar aircraft. And then I figured out what it could do. And I was like, now this makes sense. It's a fucking ocean sub hunting monster. So I really want to add it in. AWACS should be like Gandalf. Ooh. I wonder if I can do that. I don't even know how I would do that voice. All right, let me see here. Have I ever seen Starship Troopers? Ohio trucker. Please don't insult me like that. I, of course, have seen Starship Troopers. I've seen the first one, phenomenal. Second one, trash. Third one, even worse. Uh, and I think they have a fourth one that I haven't seen. First one is a cult classic. Oh, I love that movie. Um, Mrs. HLC determined that was a lie. Where's she at? Where's she at? Is she in here? As a mechanic, if you can build your carburetor, you're a fucking genius by today's standards of mechanics. <laughs> I hate that that's the fact. Like, this is the thing, guys. I love the Army. I love it. I absolutely adore the Army. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Love my job. Love what I do. Hold on. I realize that there are two types of people who are in the Army. Those like me who love their job and are just sticking it out through all the dumb shit, right? I'm just, I'm ignoring, I'm letting the dumb shit bounce off because there's a lot of dumb shit in the army and I'm just going to keep going. Uh, well, I mean, I am getting out now, but yeah. Um, and then there's those who are literally too stupid to do anything else. I watched Love on the Spectrum. There is a staggering amount of people in the army who have autism. And I'm not, like, I'm not making a joke there. Like, I, I've never, like, seen, you know, watched a show about people with autism. It's actually a really great show. It's, it's a really feel-good show. Like, it teaches you a lot. It's, it's great. But I was watching it. I was like, I served with him in Korea. I served with him at White Sands. I still serve with him. Like, it's, it's so fucking weird, man, the amount of people. Don't lie, you want that marine paper? Hell no. By the way, HLC, Russia's now gotten more Russians killed than Japan lost from nukes. I shouldn't have laughed at that. I feel bad for laughing at that because, like, 
this is the thing. I am not... I'm smart enough to realize that war is often young men dying for old men's disagreements. But... Um, historically and doctrinally, the United States specifically, uh, I don't know about anyone else's regulation, we teach that you must fight based on a series of principles. And one of those is legitimacy. Legitimacy of battle. For example, our soldiers fighting in World War II, once they got word about what was happening to POWs in Japan, they now in their hearts felt a, a determination and legitimacy, or excuse me, our Marines in the Pacific, to take that fight to the Empire of Japan and get the fucking job done. Our guys in Europe, when they started finding out about Treblinka, freaking Auschwitz-Birkenau, all those terrible things that, that Nazi Germany was doing, that built a resolve in them, a legitimacy. And same thing with Pearl Harbor. That was a legitimacy. Like, you struck us, we're going to fuck you up. So legitimacy of battle is a really, really powerful tool. And I genuinely feel like the, the staggering majority of Russians do not feel the legitimacy of their battle right now. Uh, nothing against them. It's just we train it doctrinally. What's that noise? Oh, that was uh, Nox. He was scratching at the bed. Sorry. Sorry you guys heard that. The P8 100% needs to be a sailor from the village people. <laughs> AWACS needs to be... I need to bring in AWACS. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to stay on top of stuff. Have I... Oh, yeah. Sorry, we, we did get to the Starship Troopers one. I'm doing my part. Great. Weapons, weapons for A-10s for a long time. Yeah, you did. I have, hold on, I, it got sent to me by a friend of mine. I don't know if you guys know Inspector AJ. Um, he's on TikTok and I think he's also on YouTube now. Great guy, a good friend of mine. He sent me this. My own personal GAU-8 shell. The real habitual line crosser. I love it. I love everything. Doesn't smell like powder or anything, which is kind of kind of sad. I'm surprised he got my, me one with had the primer in it. The primer's been struck, but uh, yeah. In case you guys are wondering how big a Gao Eight shell is, uh, here we go. There's a powdery bottle next to it for uh, comparison. Yeah. I think it's so cool. There was a, there was a, um, when I was in UAE last time, uh, there was a guy and he was taking Gao 8 shells and trimming them down and then laving out the inside and making them into decorative shot glasses. And I fucking kicking myself in the ass that I never got one. Hold on. Where'd that come from? Oh, okay. All right, sorry. Uh, did you hear about Germany's new laws? I have not. I think they're, someone said they're uh, legalizing cannabis. Gotta go. Thanks so much for checking on Matt, Matt Tardio. I will. I got it written down. I will check it out. Thank you, uh, Adara the Wholesome. I will check him out. Do, do the wedge tail? I, I'm not familiar. Tried to Discord DM you, have a script idea for you. Ar yeah, Archangel, yeah, I, I just responded to you. I was <laughs> That was literally, I just got the message. Uh, but have I read Starship Troopers? Josh, I have not. And if I know anything about anything, it's that the book is always better. But some people don't like to sit down and read a book. They like to watch a movie. I will tell you right now, guys, Ender's Game is one of my favorite series. Well, the book itself, obviously, it's one of my favorite books of all time. The book is phenomenal. Like, hands down, one of the best books I've ever read. Second, probably to Ender's Shadow. I liked Ender's Shadow better. I just did. It was just, it was a different, it's the same story from a different perspective, and you find out that Bean is actually a total fucking badass. But anyways, the movie Ender's Game, super excited about it. Went and watched it, total fucking disappointment. Like, the biggest part of the plot was, was a montage in the movie. Why would you do that? So... 
irritated me. Um, the military as a whole is a tism playground. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Fourth makes two look great. What? It sucks being decommissioned, but at least I'm a god. God, aircraft carrier. Enterprise, what's up, man? Big E. I thought you were coming back out. Their POWs will tell you, yeah. Uh, I tried to de... Yeah, I got that. AWACS, either Batman voice or you shall not pass Gandalf. I want to try it. You need a Red Bull camp. Yeah. Actually, hold on. Do I have something... Like a, a known size. No, I don't. I don't. That could be a new business. I'm telling you that. It was super cool, man, when they used to do that stuff. Holy crapola. Why, why are you saying holy crapola? A beer bottle. <laughs> Can't drink right now, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, too small for it to be a Beaufort. I, bro, Loopy Droopy, if you could get me a Beaufort shell, I would love you. For those of you who don't know, a Beaufort is, it's just, it's such a good gun. It's made by the Swedes, because, but the Swedish Beaufort was something we picked up. I want to say we started using them at the end of, middle of World War II. The Swedish Beaufort is a 40 millimeter fucking gun that we use for anti-aircraft and could fire 120 rounds a minute. We then took, later on in Vietnam, we took two of them and strapped them to the front of something called an M42 Duster. So now you have 240 rounds a minute of 40 millimeter fucking, you have high explosive, fragmentation, fucking air burst, like it had all kinds of fucking rounds. At 240 rounds a minute on a tracked, fucking tank love it we continued to use this thing all the way until very recently and i'm very sad to let everyone know the swedish beaufort is no longer in use on anything because what we had to do is they the swedes stopped making parts for it it had been in service so fucking long so they had them on the side of the uh, ac-130s they're now removed. They have something else in that place because they had, it was cheaper to design a new 40 mic mic than it was to try and get the parts for the Beaufort. So they used them up until 2016, 17, and then they, they got rid of them. Uh, they're, they're officially out. Yeah. Let's see. Dr. Noblex, what is going on, my dude? Hey, Dr. Noblex, I still haven't got an email stating like what, where, when, but yeah, Orson Scott Card is the biggest disappointment. I don't know anything about him personally. I love the book. Ender's Game was good. Uh, Ender's Shadow was great. Speaker for the Dead was... I don't know, I couldn't really get into it as much. Some people think that's the best one in the series. I wasn't moved by it. Um, Valentine, didn't like. I, I didn't even get all the way through it. I just wasn't a fan. Ender's Game book ate a day of my life and I have no regrets. I'm telling you, it's good. What's the most accurate war film in your opinion? Ooh, ooh. Um, okay, so there's two of them, but they're rated on different levels of accuracy. Accuracy of an actual battle and things that happened, we were soldiers. Hands down. Sergeant Major Plumley played perfectly. Mel Gibson did a perfect fucking Colonel Halmore. Everything in there was just done very, very well. Obviously, I wasn't present at the battle, but just every part of it, you understand the strategy of battle that Colonel Moore was using. Um, they make it very evident and very clear. Uh, he was also kind of a lead from the front type leader. You know, no fear. It was, it was just a really good portrayal of him. Um, um now, as for overall, like, visual reality, um, and, like, aesthetically pleasing, I would have to say Saving Private Ryan. However, that is a made-up story. Uh, well, it's not made up. It's based off of the actual things that happened. But, like, that captain may or may not have existed. Like, all of his guys may or may not have existed. But, like, just the, the design of it, like, how it looked and how that went, like, that was, that, I think, is a great representation of World War II. A Bridge Too Far is a good one. I don't think I've seen that. I'm happy. I was I was first... I was in the first Top Gun movie. 
Oh, yeah, Big E was. Yeah. Firing the old fucking F-14s off the flight deck. Old Tomcats. Beautiful aircraft. I'm pretty sure all those pilots have cancer now, though. If, in case you guys didn't know, I don't know if you're aware of this, the F-14 Tomcat had the most powerful radar that has ever been put on a fighter aircraft, a multi-role fighter aircraft. Like, to this day, it could get a missile acquisition at a far greater range than any aircraft we have in current use. But that radar, you could you could cook food, theoretically, on the nose of that fucking jet because of how powerful that radar was. So I'm pretty sure all those pilots have cancer. Like, it just, there was a lot of radiation coming out that nose for some of it not to bounce back. Uh, question, do you think China or Russia has a chance to invade our country like Red Dawn? No, I don't. I don't. Um, here, here's why. Um, so the United States has more or less made themselves undestroyable. Undestroyable is not synonymous with invincible. Keep that in mind. But let's say that they try, um, first we'll go with unconventional, unconventional weapons, chemical, nuclear, that that's what they start hitting us with. You can wipe out the entire continental United States. You can literally send us back to a smoking pile of glass and rubble. Around 50% of America's force is overseas at all times. We're an expeditionary military. So do whatever you want. There's like 15 floating apocalypses out there. They're called uh, Ohio class uh, submarines. Is it the Ohio? Not the Seawolf. I don't know. But it's a fucking submarine full of the apocalypse. Like 80, I think. I'm shooting in the dark. I have no idea. Fucking nuclear weapons. Tridents. And it can just, you're fucked. You're fucked either way. Like, they're, you you may have glassed America. They're still coming. There's 47 uh, fucking aircraft carriers in the world. 11 of them are American. There's 47 in the entire world. 11 of them are just U.S. Oh, it's, it's Ohio class? One is a continent glasser? Yeah, that's the one. I mean, and just the amount that you have soldiers, American soldiers in Germany, Poland, like name a country, unless they're an enemy of the United States, we probably have a presence there. We probably have equipment there. We probably have ammo there. We like the amount of firepower that exists in the world that is outside the continent of the United States. It's not going to do anything for you. So let's say you try to ground invasion or, or like jump in like Red Dawn. Again, it's going to take those forces a little while to get back to the United States. So you'd have to set up a beachhead and try and find a way to easily defendable before they get there, which is going to be a matter of hours, if not a day or so. Then, here's the thing. Everyone, everyone always goes, well, you know, we, we have more guns than everybody else in the world. While I agree that is true, having more guns and ammo does not mean you are better at fighting. Listen to me. I'm not trying to be an asshole, Okay. In an invasion situation or a post-apocalyptic situation, you can have a warehouse full of a million guns. If you have never trained with any of them, you are a loot crate. I'm sorry. So train with the weapons you have. There is, now on the plus side, there's three-ish million Americans that fought in the global war on terror. And they all understand very well how an insurgency works. So that's going to be the big deciding factor for the continental United States. That's, that's my thought process. Uh, my favorite aircraft is the Arbark F F-111. I love the F-111 just because it's a, it's a why the fuck not. I love it. Uh, and the Thunder Chief F-105, yep, I'm familiar with that. Uh, yes, I'm old idea for a throwback, just an excuse to throw some greenbacks at you. Hey, no, it's all good. Fuse, thank you so much. Um, I do want to bring in the F-111. I don't know what I'm going to make it, though. I think it's the Australians were the last ones to use the F-111 aardvark. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar with the F-111 aardvark, what it was is America said, we want a fighter and, and a company, whoever made the F-111, I can't remember if it was uh, which company it was, they said yes. And they're like, we also want it to be a bomber. And they're like, okay. And they're like, we also want it to fly at supersonic speeds. And they're like, oh, okay. So what they did is they took something that is slightly larger than a fighter because they had to make it that big so that it had enough lift to carry what they wanted to. And they, they made it 
capable of carrying a payload of 100,000 pounds, I think. I'm shooting in the dark there. I think it's around 100,000 pounds. And then they put these two enormous fucking engines on it to give it the ability to fly at those speeds with that kind of payload. It's it's just... <laughs> it was It was just like, we want this to do everything. And it's a cool idea, but obviously, you know, it's... It's not like, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, but I do love the F-111. I didn't even know it existed until I started doing these aircraft videos and people like, what about the F-111? So I did some homework on it. It's a really cool idea. I love it. Your thoughts on the use of smart rockets over missiles. Smart rockets have equipment that lets them act like missiles. Think of a uh, dumb bomb upgrade. So I believe in, in what aspect, and I'm not being a smart ass because For those of you who aren't aware, the difference between a rocket and a missile is usually guidance. Um, but there are smart rockets, and these rockets do minimal guidance maneuvers. Um, so like a cruise missile, you'll never have a cruise rocket. It's just you don't have a lateral surface that can produce lift and ability to navigate. You'll never have that. It just doesn't exist, at least for now. But they do have rockets that come out of like, so let's say you're using a, a HIMARS. They'll come out, and they'll do a 30-degree shift. Because when radars pick them up, they pick them up like rockets always move from this location to this location in two dimensions. So if it comes out as a 30 degree shift, the bad guys think that rocket came from here when in reality it came from here. Tactics. Um, I think it's a great thing for allied forces. Bad thing if the enemy gets their hands on it. I don't know if they have that capability yet. I have no clue. I know Russia is using a staggering amount of dumb rockets. Like they just have, uh, it's the, the, the Tosca? Is it? To, they have one that just fires a shit ton of really cheap rockets. Um, yeah. It was replacing the 1.1 gun in about 1942. What's the most accurate war, war film? Oh yeah, I already answered that one. Uh, oh, hold on. I, it did that thing where it drops all the way to the bottom. I hate when it does that. Dr. Nova says, got a new project, a GravFlex flash unit, the original lightsaber. Going to turn into power bank for my phone. Bro, that's awesome, Nova. I, I have the lightsaber right there, and I have right there on my shelf, on the little corner right there where I'm pointing, is the mount for the lightsaber. I just, <laughs> I've been busy. I'm sorry. Have I read the terminal list? I have not. A AC-130J Ghost Rider is a 30 millimeter sensor-fused autocannon. Of course you would know that, Weapons. Of course you would fucking know that. He knows. Weapons, you did that shit for a long time. and that's But that's the cool thing, though. I like that about you, Weapons. Is you literally are, you like, fucking, hold on. Where's it at? You guys are going to hear me real quick. Um, How do I fucking... Mm. I'm trying to get to there it is there it is oh you guys heard that real quick weapons you've been around here enough congratulations weapons you are now a mod don't abuse this power but you're always, I, I recognize you weapons and you actually, I like people who bring something to the conversation. So I'm fucking here for it, man. All right, let me get back to it. Uh, I've not read the terminal list. I, I can check it out. HLC thoughts on the outpost. Ooh. I completely forgot about that one. Hmm. I really like that. But here's the thing. I think it's, I think the outpost is a wonderful like a perfect interpretation of what happened that day. But that day was such extraordinary circumstances. And those men were so fucking extraordinarily brave. If you guys are not familiar with the outpost, it was the battle of Kamdesh at Cop Keating. It was, I think October, 2009. Um, Cop Keating was in a valley in the Corrigal, maybe Shycott. I don't know. One of the valleys and the Taliban amassed 300 people to attack this cop with rockets, fucking mortars, machine guns. Um, and there was like 40 people on this cop, maybe less, uh, maybe 50, I don't know. That many people on this cop. And they were Americans. 
And Clint Romache got his Medal of Honor for this. Uh, they did lose some soldiers, but the reason Clint Romache got a Medal of Honor is they had to get the Taliban back outside the walls so that close air support could fucking do anything about it. So when everything went to shit and everything had been fallen down on the job and the Taliban literally breached the wall and were inside the cop hunting Americans down to eliminate them, his, his fucking big brain, big fucking sack moment is... Well, let me see. We're outnumbered like fucking seven to one. Let's attack them. Like that's, it's just, it's so fucking wildly like, you must, I, I can't even imagine the headspace that man was in. I really can't because like, I would be terrified in that situation. I'm sure he was too, but like, to for your brain to go, the best way to deal with this is a counterattack. So he, and he grabbed like two guys that were not wounded and started pushing the Taliban back outside the, the front gates and started fighting them back and was like getting wounded people into shelter. Like Clint Romache is a goddamn badass. Like it's, it's just, that was a fucking amazing moment. Aim 54 Phoenix is a public range of 120 miles for the F-14. Yeah, it, it reaches out there, man. What's your opinion on Big E Enterprise? I... I don't know enough to make a, a, a huge assessment, but what I will tell you is the Enterprise is probably one of the most iconic and important ships in American history. Um, second, maybe, to the Constitution. Um, the Enterprise is has been and always will be kind of the pride of the American Navy. Um, at least World War II and up. Um, my grandfather, for a short period of time, did serve on Biggie. Um, I wish I could get him. I wish my grandfather was in World War II in the Pacific Theater, spent a little time on Biggie. I think the rest of it, he was on the Lafay. Um, and he was, I mean, he wrote journals. And my dad has the journals. They're leatherback journals. And my dad will not let me take them because I want to get them published. This is firsthand daily accounts of fucking World War II. There's shit in there that I've never seen in any, any fucking history show, any movie. Like, they pulled up off the coast of some fucking island and they were kind of like checking, making sure everything was good to go. They were in a, in a, in a friendly area. And the dudes on the boats kept coming out to like, hey, you know, we want to meet you Americans, but all the men had elephantitis. So the Navy was like, no, don't let them near the boats. And so they started spraying the water with 50 cal to keep them away from the boats. Like, that's shit you don't hear about. So, yeah. First nuclear submarine way before the Big E. I, you know, I, I just, I, there's something I love about Big E, man. Las Vegas, New Mexico. You're from Las Vegas, New Mexico. I passed through there all the time when I was going from uh, where I was living in Las Cruces and uh, up to Denver, where my mom is at. Red Storm Rising, Tom Clancy was accurate. I'll have to read it. Or is it a movie? Why don't we have rods from God? Awesome concept. Yeah. Two problems with that. One, cost of putting them up there. Number two, the ability to negate the engagement. So all of our weapons have a fail safe. We can, de we can destroy them in flight. And something like that, you're going to want to be able to destroy it in flight. You could not put enough explosive on board a rod of tungsten to do enough damage to stop it if you decided to pull that trigger. Oh, 11 super carriers and 9 helo carriers. I stand corrected, Aaron. So I'm trying to catch up, guys. Hello there. Hello there. HSC, you look like you drop com... Yo! Michael Slade! That's offensive. I do not drop comment. All right, I'm going to catch up real quick, and then we got to hop off, guys. We're at two hours. Every Friday, I will be here from 1800, 6 p.m. Central Time until 8 p.m. And we, I mean, I started a little bit early. I started a few minutes early, but I'm looking at the counter. We are at two hours and one minute. So we're we're a little over. Some F-110s. Hold on. My brain's drawing a blank on 110s. I need to look that up again. The Hawker Hurricane, I love it. Again, another fucking iconic aircraft that gets overshadowed by the Spitfire. Spitfire. Spitfire was better in every way except for cost and the ability to get those materials for the Brits. The Hawker Hurricane was a fucking workhorse. They built so many of them. The vast majority of like the, uh, the Battle of Britain was Hawker Hurricanes. 
there was some Spitfires, and the Spitfires caused some fucking damage to uh, to Stukas. But the Hawker Hurricane really carried that shit. Nah, the Zero. <laughs> I like the tor Tornadoes. Impressive payload. Yeah. I I feel like I would be biased if I said I didn't like the, the, the Tornadoes. Tornados, if you're British. Uh, planning a road trip in July. Should we meet and duel? Am I busy in July? Honestly, bro, like my whole summer, I, I got a trip coming up. Like there's like trips and family visits all summer right now. Noblex fucking... Shoot me an email or shoot me a, a fucking Discord. Now that you got me on Discord, man, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Let me figure that out. Do an XF-84H or the Thunder Screech. I'm not familiar with that aircraft. Is that an actual aircraft or is that XF? Hold on, let me look back at that. XF-84H. I'm looking at that. All right, let me see. I think I'm all caught up on the Super Chats. All right, is the Discord link inactive? No, shouldn't be. Should be popping in. Is Did my bot stop working? I'm sorry. I Yeah, you guys have been telling me. Sorry, Wolfram, thank you. I'm sorry. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the button, guys. I'm going to call it a night here. I got to go uh, get some stuff done. So, oh, I can't hear my, my, my stuff. I know I heard about the A50 down. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there you have it. Um, we will be uh, back next Friday night live. I'm trying to get a live form or a long form done and get that out to you guys. We got some more short form stuff. There's a lot going on in the news. I've been super busy. I apologize about that. So as always... Do not give in to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing. I will see you guys right here next time. If you'd like to support the channel, go to Habitual Liner, habituallinecrosser.com. Get yourself some merch and stuff. Keep an eye out. I will absolutely promote it when I get it. I got a new design coming. Working on the FAFO design if you weren't here earlier when I announced that. So hopefully we can get that. Um, hopefully we can get that done, guys. All right. I will catch you all later.